bless every person and every address represented in this place. We come this morning praying for every family, every community, every household, every business, every place of employment. That you will continue to provide for us, protect us, and create a path of righteousness in all of our lives. We come asking that you will watch over our children and grandchildren. We come praying for our nieces and our nephews, our sisters and our brothers. Have your will, God. This we ask and this we pray in Jesus' name. If you still believe in the power of prayer, put your hands together right where you are. Come on, you can do that with that. Put your hands together. We
Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you this morning asking now that you would speak to us through your holy and your divine word. God, we've come not for form, shape, nor fashion, but we've come that your name may be glorified in the earth. We thank you, God, for the ability to worship you this morning. And we've come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Make your word now a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. This we ask and pray in the name of the one who was sent to die for the remission of our sins. In the name of the one who hung, bled, died, but yet was resurrected and shall return. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray this morning. It is in that great name that we stand. It is in that great name that we gather to worship him. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior and our Redeemer. Let those who believe say amen. 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 God bless you. We thank each of you for gathering with us this morning as we come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We count it a pleasure that you would join with us in our virtual worship experience. We thank God for those of you who are worshiping with us via Facebook, those of you who are watching live through YouTube, those of you who are old school and you're listening in via the free conference call, wherever you're viewing from, wherever you're watching from, even in the sanctuary this morning, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we wish you Godspeed. There's a word I want to call to your attention for the time that is ours to share. Come with me to the gospel according to John. John. John's gospel, chapter 17. We want to begin reading this morning at verse 20. We will continue to discuss the prayer life of Jesus Christ. Last week, we looked at the fact that Jesus made prayer a priority in his life. And we hope to glean from the prayer life of Jesus that prayer needs to become a priority again, Sister Carter. Jesus made time for prayer. Jesus spent time in prayer. And Jesus suggests that you and I should do the same. As we come to verse 20, there you'll find these words. Neither pray I for these alone, but I pray for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gave, givest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Verse 23, I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, I, I pray, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, 
the world has not known thee. But I have known thee, and thou has, has known that I have been sent. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. I've read in your hearing this morning from John chapter 17, verses 20 through verse 26. This morning, I, I dare or I attempt to speak from this subject, praying like Jesus prayed. You may be seated in the house of our Lord. Praying like Jesus prayed. Last week, we endeavored to take a personal analysis of the prayer life of Jesus. We realized last week that Jesus in John chapter 17 is praying what theologians have labeled as the high priestly prayer of Jesus Christ. For in the text before us, we find Jesus praying to God for you and I. In John chapter 17, in verses 1 through 5, we discover Jesus praying for himself. In verses 6 through 19, we discover Jesus praying for his disciples. And now, in verse number 20, Jesus begins to pray for future believers like you and I. I believe this morning that if we are going to look at the prayer life of Jesus, there are some things that we can glean from the prayer life of Jesus as we attempt to pray for one another. The prayer life of Jesus reveals two things this morning that I believe is demanding our attention. And after I biblically highlight and illustrate the two things that we see in the prayer life of Jesus, I will then take my seat. But the first thing uh, I could not help but notice in the prayer life of Jesus is that the prayer life of Jesus reveals, number one, a relationship that is identifiable and that is intimate. Jesus does not beat around the bush in making known the object or the subject of the one he is communicating with. Jesus' prayer life reveals to you and I a relationship between God and Jesus that is no secret, but it is identifiable. Jesus does not have a secret relationship with God, but this is an open, honest, transparent relationship where Jesus makes known to those who would dare to eavesdrop on his prayers or to those who would dare to read these words, who is the object of his love and affection. As we dare to ease into post-pandemic Christianity in this season, we are not going to be called to live a religious life. But we are going to be called to live a life where our relationship with God is on display day after day after day. Because when your relationship with God is on display, we can see your relationship with God on display by the way husbands will treat their wives and by the way parents will treat their children and by the way wives will respect and honor their husbands when our relationship with God is on display. We treat one another 
with the God-given dignity we deserve. Yes. Jesus makes it known in this prayer that this prayer is not saturated in religious vernacular. Yes. But this prayer is saturated in a relationship. Number one, it's identifiable. Yes. Jesus is not treating God like a side chick. He's not treating God like a weekend lover. He's not treating God as if God is some friend with benefits. You see by the words that flow from the lips of Jesus that he is serious and he is intimate in his relationship with God. Notice the word that he uses in, in this, this prayer. prayer. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. I and you. Knowing the word of knowing means to, to know from, from an intimate, intimate perspective. perspective. And if, if we are going to have a prayer life that we're going to produce, if we are going to have a prayer life that we're going to produce healing, if we are going to have a prayer life that's going to produce breakthrough, if we are going to have a prayer life that's going to produce the supernatural, we must learn to have a relationship with God that is intimate. Jesus, in the text before us, is praying, watch this, to God for you and me. Now, Patricia, the reason why this passage of scripture is so important, because this scripture teaches you and I how Jesus prayed for us. And how we ought to pray for one another. Yes, yes, yes. We, 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 we see something else being revealed in the prayer life of Jesus. The first thing Jesus revealed was a relationship that was identifiable and a relationship that is intimate. But now Jesus is moving from his, his revealing his relationship. But, but this morning, I want us to pause and look at the request Jesus makes for you and me. Yes. Because I've discovered, Mitchell, if we were to look at what Jesus prayed for us, when Jesus prays for us, we will know, Erica, how to better pray for one another. You see, praying for Sister Carter is not getting in Sister Carter's business. Praying for Patricia is not Asking Patricia who called you last night, what time he texted you, how long y'all was on the phone. That that ain't prayer. That's crying. But Jesus is praying for you and me. And and, and, and this is startling to me because the same prayer he prayed in John 17 He's praying it today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So so he he prayed for us prior to the resurrection, and he's praying for us after the resurrection. Some of y'all missed that. Let let, 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 Let me give you a scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 34 says, who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, yea, rather, it is Christ that is risen again. Who is even, watch this, at the right hand of God, who also is making intercession for us. Yes. Yes. Mona, I had to do some digging yesterday at the parse of the verse. Yes. I, had to, I had to dig deep. I had to get my... I'm, I'm legally blind. I, I can't read all of my books the way I used to read them. So I had to pull out the books and, 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 and say, wife, baby, we're going to do some redaction. We're going to do some theological redaction today. I, I got to preach a sermon tomorrow. I need to know the tense of the verb that Jesus is using as he's making intercession for us. Yes. And so we, look, we looked up the Greek word for intercession. Then, then we looked at 
the redaction, and we looked at the fact that this is a present indicative action. Yes. Mitch, I shouted oh. over brunch. Yes. Daniel Carter, yes. it's a present action. Yes. Which means it continues to take place even now. Yes. He didn't just pray for us. He prayed for us. It's a present indicative action. Mitch, indicative means it's, it, it is without any variance of doubt. It is a matter of fact. Yeah. It's a matter of fact. That while we're here gathered in Berkeley, yeah. Jesus is at the right hand yeah. of God yeah. making intercession yeah. for us. Yeah. It's a present activity. Yeah. It's not something he did in times past. But it's something he continues to do even now. Yes. And we learned this morning that what Jesus prayed for us then, he's praying for us now. Hallelujah. Come to John chapter 17. As we look at the request that Jesus makes on you and I behalf. Yes. Notice something about the prayer of Jesus for you and I. I notice he doesn't pray for money cometh. He doesn't pray for a bigger house. He doesn't pray for a new car. He don't pray for, he, he, he doesn't pray that we get a new boo. He doesn't pray that things go the way we want them to go. The first request that Jesus makes in John chapter 17, he prays that we would experience joy. Come to the text with me, lest you think I'm lying. John chapter 20, verse 13. Notice what he says. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world. Yeah. That they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Yeah. Jesus does not pray that we will be comfortable. Jesus, as a matter of fact, he's not concerned about our comfort. Yes. Yes. Jesus is more concerned about our character. Yes. Notice he, he says, I pray that they may experience joy. Yes. Now, he didn't say happiness because joy is deeper than happiness. Yes. Happiness is contingent upon circumstances. Yes. You see, if you're going to be happy, the light's got to be dim. If you're going to be happy, your steak has to be well done. If you're going to be happy, your, your feet have to be sweet with the lemon squeeze on the side. Happiness is contingent upon external circumstances, but joy is contingent upon Jesus. Listen, whether you sing happy birthday for me or not, I still got joy. When I'm all I got joy. Jesus prayed that we will ex experience joy. Because that's when that, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You see, the joy of the Lord is something that man can't take from you. Listen, Greater New Mount Herman, let, can we be honest? Some Negroes walked away from you. But guess what? They took some people and they took some property, but they didn't take your joy. He prays that we will experience joy. Joy is the stillness of spirit on the inside that says, come hell or high water taking place around me, Erica, the, it all can be bad, but guess what? Because of who's in me. And because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And because he that's in me gives me joy. You can take it all. <laughs> Listen. You can take them clothes. You can throw my library outside. I got, I got a great library, but you can have that. Yeah, yeah. Throw the clothes away. Yeah. Most of them too big. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But if I go, 
hold on to my joy. Joy is the contentment that comes from knowing Christ is in control. He prays that we may experience joy. The second thing he prays for is in verse 15. Listen, if we're going to be praying for one another, we got to pray like Jesus prayed. Yeah, yeah. Jesus didn't pray for our comfort, but he prayed that we would have joy. Yeah. Jesus prayed that you would have joy regardless of how the marriage is going. You have joy regardless of how the kids are acting this week. You have joy no matter how much money you got in your pocket. You have joy regardless of what the doctor say. You have joy regardless of how many followers and likes you have on Facebook. You see the hell with the world because Jesus is the source of joy and from me. You or your boo can't take my joy. You or your business can't take my joy. The congressman, the proud boy, the KKK, the Nazi, they can't take my joy. He said, pray that you have joy. And that's my prayer for you. I don't know your business. So I'm in your circumstances. But I will pray, regardless of what the doctor say. Yes, yes, hallelujah. There be joy. Yes, yes. But notice it, he moves a step further in praying for us. He prays that the second prayer, verse, the second request in verse 15 is this. Notice what he says. He says, verse 15, I pray not that thou should take them out. I pray not that thou should take them out. Out of the world. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not praying that you take them out of the world. Yeah. But I'm praying that you would keep them yeah. from evil. Yeah. Yeah. This is a prayer of protection. Yeah. Jesus is praying that as we navigate this cruel and the evil world. You see, if we don't live in the world, God can't get the glory in the world. Yes. I, I do a lot of ministry in North Richmond. People, people yes, same, no moaning, you say, oh Lord. That's the same thing, my friends, in Atlanta. That's the same thing, my friends, in Charlotte. That's the same thing, my friends, in Miami. That's the same thing, my friends, in Atlanta. That's the same thing, my friends, in Greenville said to me. Miss, I told them, I live in Richmond. Oh, why Richmond? I say, hell, why not Richmond? I went to Morehouse. Richmond reminds me of the West End, Atlanta. If you mind your business in Richmond, you're all right. But if you're looking for trouble, you're going to find it supersized. With some free cookies on the side. But God has sent me into Richmond. And I'm good. Because I share the gospel. Oh, Rev. Hey, Rev. Yeah. Hey. 415, what's up? Hey, Iron Triangle. L listen, my, my barber cut my hair at night in the Iron Triangle. We didn't know we was in the Iron Triangle. We just know we was on the other side of some railroad tracks. <laughs> Grab you, 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 man, no, listen, listen, all the guns in the house, oh, I'm safe. <laughs> I'm, I ain't afraid of nobody in the house. I'm afraid for somebody who come in. Why? Because God will send us into the world to shed light, to be salt. And, and then you, if you're afraid to go into the world, then there will be some who will die in their sins and not know who Jesus is. But God will send you into the world and pray a prayer for protection at the same time. And listen, some of y'all in the world and don't know. That's the foolish part about it. See, some of y'all in the world and don't even know it. Hey, but, but notice what he prays for, Daniel. He prayed that God, he prayed God keep him. So the Carter, it dawned on me. As a kid, I, I said, I wonder what McCarter mean. 
I'm grown. No, you ain't grown. You just of a certain age. <laughs> Until I had some kids, uh -huh. girls, yeah. who won't call back, they text back. Uh -huh. See that go over some of y'all heads. <laughs> I'm not in your business, but uh, listen, I'm not trying to keep tabs on you. My prayer is that God will keep you. Yeah. Because you see, you gotta live long enough to discover that Jesus prayed that God would keep us because he realized we can't keep ourselves. If we could keep ourselves, tell me what the hell happened January the 6th in Washington, D.C. If we could keep ourselves. If we could keep ourselves, tell me what happened here in the Bay Area when Japanese were thrown into internment camps. Tell me what happened. And so Jesus prays to God that God would keep us because he knows that these children, although they live by faith, they're a little bit foolish and they can't keep themselves. But he prays that God would keep us, watch this now, from the devil. <sighs> keep them from the devil. You do know that the devil <laughs> wear more than just Prada. The devil wear Nike. The devil wear Fila. The devil wear Adidas. The devil wear Gucci. The devil wear Louis. The devil wear knockoffs. But he said, keep them from the devil. Because Jesus knows there's a spirit that wants to kill and steal and to destroy everything we got going on. You want to kill peace in the marriage. You want to destroy the future of your kids. You want to kill your aspirations. And he knows that they cannot keep themselves. So he said, keep them from the devil. Keep them from deception. Now, we're going to deal with this later because, you see, church folk can, not just church folk, but church people and those who don't live by faith, we live in an agnostic society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We live in a world where there's more than one perspective on truth. Yeah. And so you have a remnant in this nation who get their information from a QAnon shaman. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. They're writing your bills. Yeah. You laughing, but they're making legislation about where tax is going to go. You, you, it's funny. Yeah. But, but they, are the, they are in control. Yeah. And they got other people following them. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the right words to say. Yeah. Yes. And so he prayed that God would keep us from the devil and God would keep us from being deceived. Because let me say something. The greatest trick the enemy ever played on God's children and the greatest trick the enemy ever played on black folk in America is to deceive you into knowing who in the world you are. He wants to deceive you into believing that your life is, is based upon how some man treats you. Your life is based upon how it goes with some woman. The devil is a lie. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You created in God's image. So because he created me mocha, I'm a living my mochaness. And if you pale, go to the one that made you. But you're not going to make me hate me because you don't like you. I think I'm preaching. Why, beloved? Because, because if, we, if we don't see what Jesus is praying for us, we will miss out on the thing that God will have us to enjoy in the existential. Yeah, so he says, keep us. 
Keep us from the devil. Keep us. Keep us from being deceived. And keep us, thirdly, keep us from being divided. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Satan destroys many families. Satan destroys many communities. Satan has destroyed great societies by dividing and conquering them from within. And so Jesus says, keep them, Lord. Keep them from the evil one. That ain't all he prayed. He said, listen, not other. I want them to have joy. I want you to keep them, but keep them from the evil one. But verse 17 says, I want you to sanctify them. I told you this prayer goes beyond the religious. Because many of us think that from a religious perspective, we think that sanctification has something to do with some religious denomination. If you're a child of God, you ought to be sanctified. If you're a believer, you ought to be sanctified. But here it is. Most church folk don't know what sanctification really means. To be sanctified means to be set apart. Set apart for a sovereign purpose. Then, Mitch, I knew I wouldn't get many amens, so let me give you the illustration the Lord gave me this week to show women how they set stuff apart. The same way you do that good china or the same way you do the fur. It's set apart. You put it up until it's time to serve a purpose. Mona, you know how you do the red bottles. You don't wear them in Berkeley. You just wear them down in L.A. And when you go to uh, see your son up in Seattle, I I saw you on the ground. I saw you with the red bottoms. You don't wear them here, but they set apart. They serve a purpose. And so God is saying, Jesus is praying to God that, that he will set us apart. Notice what he says in verse 17. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Jesus prays that God will sanctify us, that God will set us apart for his service, that we will know the truth, the truth about who he is and the truth about who we are in him and the truth about what we have been sent to do and the truth about the service he expects you and I to render. Jesus This ain't the first time Jesus talked about truth. In John, Gospel John 10 and 10 says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with truth in this prayer again because Jesus realizes that many of us are living lies. We're living lies and we're telling lies. That ain't on the paper. How do you know you're living a lie? Well, they ask you, how you doing? I'm good. But you were just complaining in your mind about how you wish you would have never woke up this morning. Why are we living a lie? Listen, we don't have to live a lie and live by faith. Why? Because God is the truth. And if you're going to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so once we realize the truth, we can operate in freedom. Mm -hmm. Jesus prays that God will sanctify us through the truth because your word is truth. See, when you discover the truth, you become alive. In America, when when, when slave owners realize that these black people know the truth, they know that they are descendants of kings and queens. They know that they are architects and scientists and meteorologists and, and political scientists. They know they're mathematicians and, 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 and bridge builders and, 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 and farmers and agricultural scientists. They know. And so the truth makes us alive. The truth makes us alert. And Erica, the truth allows us to move ahead in life because, listen, some of us have been held back because we don't know the truth. P. 
People are telling lies. Some people are living lies. Jesus is praying that you and I will be sanctified. Set apart for the sole purpose of serving God. But be sanctified, set apart, not in a community of lies. But we will be set aside in a community of truth. Can we do some truth telling? Yeah. Yeah. I got some issues. Yes. Pat, you got some issues. Yes. Mona, you got some issues. Yes. Yes. Mitchell, I know you got issues. Miss, you born in Compton, man. I, I pray for you every day. Uh, uh, Eric, I see you. But, but the reality is, that's the truth. All of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. But here's another truth. We who believe in God have been set free from the penalty and the pain and the punishment the truth. He says, he prays, sanctify them through the truth. Because he knows that when we know the truth, we will eventually be set free. Yes. Jesus prays uh, that we would experience joy. Jesus prays that God would keep us. Jesus prays that we would be sanctified by the truth. Jesus prayed, watch this now, he, he prays another prayer in verse 21, that we will be made one. Yes. Yes. He's praying for our unity. Yes. And, he, and he's praying for a unity and a chemistry that surpasses human understanding. Hallelujah. What do you mean, pastor? Notice what he says in verse 21. He says, as neither, he said, therefore, that they may be one as thou, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. People don't understand, Mitch, how we can be one in Christ. Yes. Well, all you got to do is look at the Lord's Prayer. Yes. Our Father. Yes. If he's our Father, yes. that makes us sisters and brothers. Yes. And so that's, that's, that's what the white church in America needs to understand. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't live a lie of telling your grandkids and grandkids that they're not people. We can enslave them. The Bible affirms this. But what you going to do when little Jim Crow the third realizes the truth? <laughs> They are people just like us. They bleed just like we bleed. And Jesus prayed that we would be one. I talked about this unity is not uniformity. He wants the black, the brown, the red, the beige, the yellow, and the white to be one. Dear Jim Crow, ain't no colored section in heaven. Somebody need to say that, Pat. I, I felt the old man pushing me to say that. Yeah. Right? Ain't no be no colored section in heaven. All of God's children, either we're going to be there or we're not. Yeah. And we're lying to ourselves, talking about we're going to be one over there, and we can't be one down here. Yeah. Mitch, this week I... I talked to Dan in Jack London, the leader, Inglewood mm-hmm. families, mm-hmm. leader, Southside Crips, mm-hmm. in the Bay. That's a Southern politic, right? Yeah. Try to be one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we keep killing each other, if we all go eye for eye, all of us going to be blind. Yeah. Didn't they say it? Yeah. If the streets are trying to become one, if, if, if people in the streets are trying to consider options about unifying, knowing that there's another force want to kill us all, why can't the church become one? Yeah. 
I explained to them. I said, listen, I'm from Georgia, but I live in the northern, live in the bay. <laughs> and in the bay, we won. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Whether I'm from North Richmond, the waterfront in Berkeley, yeah. East Oakland, yeah. Yeah. the North Pole, yeah. when we get to Santa Rita, yeah. uh-huh. we won. Yeah. And, and if we can get become one in Santa Rita, why can't we become one in the sanctuary? Why can't we become one in the street? Jesus, pray, make them one as we are one. He's praying for unity that, that, that goes beyond boundaries. He's praying for unity that unites people with, 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 with known differences. He's praying for unity that is a sign of maturity. But he's praying for unity that is necessary if we are going to get to our place of destiny. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Jesus is praying not only that we be one, but Jesus say, listen, make them one as we are one because they can't get to where I am until they get together. 24, verse 24 says this. Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me Be with me where I am. Jesus prays that you and I will eventually, after we go through all we're going through existentially, he prays that in the eschatological reality of our lives that we will be where he is. And you do know where he is. He's in the place where the Wicked shall cease from troubling. He's in a place where, where, where Sabbath shall have no end. He's in a place where the streets are paved with gold. He's in a place where there's no sickness, no sorrow, no pain. And, and, and if we are going to be where he is, we must have the unity it takes to get to that place of destiny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, plays the last prayer. He asks, he makes these requests for us. He prays that we may experience joy. He prays, Pat, that God will keep us. He prays that God will sanctify us through his truth, for his word is true. But he keeps on praying. He prays that you and I would be one. But he keeps on praying. Then he prays, lastly, verse 26, he prays this, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. And I, in them. Jesus is praying that we will learn how to love. He's praying that the love that we will come to experience will be a love that is unconditional. You do know he loves us. Sometimes life can become so draining. Sometimes life can become so dark. Sometimes life can become so dismal that you will begin to ask yourself, does God really love me? Well, I've come to tell somebody today, he loves you. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you. He declared his love. You don't believe me? The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. So that uh, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have uh, everlasting life. 
The question asked, how do you know uh, he loves me? Yeah, I know he loves me uh, because uh, the Bible says he loves me. I know he loves me uh, because uh, he woke me up this morning. Jesus. Like this cross is vertical. He prays to God. But like the cross, it's horizontal. He prays for us. You know, Jesus can pray for us. Every now and then, for you. I need it. I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. Dan, you know I'm from the Bay. I've been in the Bay too long. I need prayer the way a whale needs water. 
I need prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes. Noel Bird need air. Yes. I need prayer. Yes, Lord. The way the Bay Area needs the bridge. Yes. 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 I can't get to where I need to get to. Yes. Yes. And what's coming to me can't get to me. Yes. If we don't pray, I'm through. Yes. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus. And we thank you for his example to us and for us in prayer. We commit to praying like Jesus prayed yes, yes. to God for one another. Yes, yes. And I'm praying now for the person who's praying for their family. Yes. I want to pray now for the person who's praying for their marriage. Yes, yes. I'm praying now for the person who's trying to make their ends meet. I'm praying now for the men and women and families who live off of university yes, God. in Tent City. Yes, yes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, have your way, oh God. As you divinely shift the circumstances, we ask that you will give us joy. God, give us joy that surpasses all understanding. Father, keep us. Keep us from danger seen and unseen. God, sanctify us. Through your truth and your word is that truth. Your word sets us apart from the world. Your word clearly defines how we ought to live with and for one another. God, make us one. As you and the Father are one, make us so connected that people cannot understand how we can be so different and still function for the same purpose and person. Oh God, lead us to where you are. We want to be where you are. But God, before we get to where you are, we want to be like you are. We want to love like you. We want to love our family like you. We want to love our neighbors like you. We want to love our enemies like you. We want to love our neighbors like you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may we love patiently. May we love kindly. May our love keep no record of wrong. May our love seek to not puff itself up. God, may our love be unconditional, yeah. unceasing, yeah. unmerited. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Beloved, I'm Pastor Johnny Leggett, and I thank you for tuning in to our virtual worship experience. We hope and trust that something was said to encourage your hearts and minds. And as we go, I, I want to just challenge you to just where, right where you are, where you're listening from, where you're viewing from. Just sing this song. Let the church say, hey, hey, hey.